the first thing that struck all of us when we got out of the lift onto the internal landing was there was a a, a, a dog fight happening, you know, sort of an organised dog fight, and that was that was my first experience of coming onto the estate. It had always reminded me of Poland or or somewhere like that. Um, the, the kind of image that we had of Poland in the 80s, you know, sort of behind the Iron Curtain kind of feel. I think from the outside, it's it's a foreboding, intimidating area. But the, the, the main memory I have of going into some of these areas, into some of these properties, was that um, the rooms were huge. Um, the layout in a lot of the places was quite imaginative, quite unusual. You know, you, you, you kind of go in the front door and go downstairs to the to the living room perhaps or upstairs to the kitchen or all, all kinds of weird sort of things that, that kind of broke with convention and, and I found that quite quite interesting and quite playful. One of the things that I hear regularly when I talk to people who used to live here and they said that, that they felt that the council would deliberately run it down from the 80s onwards when they'd started putting short let tenants, problem tenants in, that's when all the sort of drug dealing and prostitution that they'd felt that, that, that the decline had kind of set in around about then and most of them sort of were clinging on to some sort of hope and then found out that there was a you know this land grab and the place had been snapped up and was going to be pulled down the age of being a, a council tenant having any kind of security so i realized when i saw when i witnessed what happened on the haygate estate i realized that that, that i was clinging on to a dream from a bygone era and and you know the world just or this town it just isn't like that anymore and it's not going to go back to it anytime soon My friend lives in that block, but she got moved out um, because they're knocking it down. So she has a decision with her family to come back and move into the two bedrooms or they can move away like Liverpool, Manchester, they have to move out. Her family's quite big, so I don't know if they're going to squeeze into a two bedroom, which is really bad because I won't see her again. But you got to do what you got to do. I think the um, community and Asbury Estate, they will grow stronger and like they will unite as one instead of thousands of people going into the houses every day not saying hello. That's the only thing I think I will miss uh, when it comes to our, our block for moving away is the you know is the sort of sense of community and hopefully wherever we move to. Um, we can try and sort of build a new community. I love the area, but, you know, because I've lived in it all my life. But, um, no, it'd be just lovely to see it all regenerated and all looking, you know, really snazzy compared to the dump that it looks like at the moment. We'll be guaranteed to have a two-bedroom, so we won't have to move out of a three-bedroom straight into a one. We, w You know, we will get a two. The council weren't having it. But, you know, the, the residents fighting um, to have it, and we got it. My cousin lives, like, around the corner next to Burgess Park. He's a bit afraid of um, Hellsbury because they think, oh, it's, it's a gangster place, there's that, 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 and that. But say, it's quite calm. There's not really what people see in the Hellsbury. It's actually cool. Then uh, this day, I just came up back from school, and it looks like another complete area. And, and this is me, is this my house? Is this Ellsbury?